and welcome to In the World, a monthly look at relevant topics in the news from a Christian perspective. I'm Jamie Snyder. My co-host this month is Greg Derwart. Greg, great to see you again. Nice Thanks for joining you again. us. Yep. We have three great stories to cover this week. When Justices Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh were appointed to the United States Supreme Court by President Trump, most people believed it signaled a more predictable conservative turn for the court. Prior to his retirement, Justin, Justice Anthony Kennedy was thought to be a swing vote between four conservative and four liberal justices. Now that he is no longer on the court, the addition of Justices Gorsuch and Kavanaugh, along with President Bush's appointment of Chief Justice John Roberts, appears to have created a solid four to five conservative majority. But the actual decisions have not necessarily turned out to be so predictable. For example, Chief Justice Roberts was the swing vote in the ruling against the Trump administration's request to add a citizenship question to the 2020 census. On two occasions, Justice Gorsuch was a swing vote in striking down criminal statutes. Justice Kavanaugh provided the deciding vote against Apple in an antitrust case. All four cases saw these conservative justices voting with the more liberal bloc of the court. Legal experts are starting to look upon these three justice groupings as something of a collective swing vote, with the question of which one could serve that role varying from case to case. Of the three, Gorsuch has been more, most likely to side with the liberal bloc, providing a deciding fifth vote four times since he took the bench. But it works in reverse as well. Justices Stephen Breyer and Ruth Bader Ginsburg have each joined five to four majorities with conservative justices twice this term. What do you think about this? Well, I think that um, it, uh, there's not so much party lines quite so prevalent anymore. It's a nice return to common sense a little bit, it seems like, or at least that's what my hope is for it. Yeah, when you think about uh, this third branch of our federal government, it obviously was not meant to be political in nature. Uh, when you look at uh, the rule of law, there, there shouldn't be a, a a conservative view or a liberal view, there should be the legal view. Right. Um, but it is interesting, you know, one of the one of the things that we talk about uh, in terms of how elections have consequences that outlive, you know, the four or eight years of a presidential term is the, the president's power to appoint Certainly. justices uh, to the Supreme Court and the lower courts. Um, so they're there's an ex at least in our modern uh, political environment. There's an expectation that you're going to get what you pay for <laughs> in right. terms of electing a, a liberal president. You know, you should expect more liberal judges and and, and vice versa. Um, but I I think that when when you look at a good judge, uh, obviously you want them to adhere to the Constitution and the the precedents set by existing law, uh, and that's not a, a liberal or conservative approach. That should be considered a impartial, a, a constitutional or right. a, a originalist right. uh, way of uh, looking uh, at that branch of government. Um, the other thing uh, we were reading an article this morning about how we've become such a, a um, litigious society and it's it's just a knee-jerk reaction to want to file you know a, a case and you know if we don't like the outcome we will take it to the next level and uh, ultimately to the Supreme Court and some of the uh, the rulings that we've seen are you see the Supreme Court take not choosing not to to make an opinion and they take it they send it back down to the lower mm -hmm. courts. In other words, stop sending us this stuff and figure this out on your own right. uh, at a lower level and uh, even at, at a state level uh, instead of just assuming you need the Supreme Court to get what you want. Right. And that's a great point. It's it's a little bit, um, you know, of a parent sending the child back to, to do something right, you know, before they, they bring it back all the way up to the top. Um, I love the choices that President uh, Trump has made, you know, for the Supreme Court. And, mm. um, you know, we potentially have another opportunity, you know, for another justice um, should Justice Ginsburg, yeah. you know, leave the bench while, while Trump is serving the presidency. So so that could change the story, you know, I even more exponentially Absolutely. down the road if, if that were to be a factor. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, these justices uh, serve for life. Uh, so d depending on how young they come in at, at the beginning, uh, they can serve for a generation. Certainly. You know, for 20 plus years. Uh, Long so, lasting effects, as you mentioned. Absolutely. So, but I think the, 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 the main point of the, the story is, you know, 
not everyone, I, I guess a lot of conservatives aren't happy with the rulings of some of these recent justices. Uh, and even going back to, like you said, uh, Chief Justice Roberts, who was a, a Bush appointment uh, appointee, um, you know, we're, we're, not, we're not necessarily agreeing with all of these uh, decisions, but... A little uh, middle of the road didn't, yeah. didn't hurt anybody, so, so I think we're in a good place with it. Yeah, very good. We ready for our next story? Yes. Okay. David Rourke, communications director for the Village Church, does some impressive graphic design work for the Village Church, uh, a large church outside of Dallas, Texas, so he works there. Uh, his work is impressive enough that he was invited to be a speaker at the Circles Conference, a three-day event for designers in graphics, creative, web, and digital design. However, the Dallas chapter of the American Institute of Graphic Arts objected. The AIGA is a professional organization that, according to its website, exists to, quote, advance design as a professional craft, strategic advantage, and vital cultural force. The Dallas chapter notified organizers of the Circle Conference that if Mr. Rourke was involved, they would not be. AIGA stated that the Village Church did not meet its standards of inclusion, specifically referring to its positions on traditional marriage and women not serving as pastors. The local AIG chapter issued a statement saying, we feel it would be hypocritical of us to be involved in the conference and tacitly, tacitly uh, endorse the policies of the village church. This would be a misallocation of our membership resources and a disservice to all members of our community against whom the organization discriminates. In response to AIGA's threat to leave, the Circle Conference disinvited Mr. Rourke. After he learned he was no longer welcome to speak at the design conference, Mr. Rourke shared his thoughts on Twitter. Yesterday I was removed as a speaker at Circle's Conference. I have no hard feelings toward AIGA or Circles, only love. I understand this was a complex situation, and the last thing I would want to do is cause a problem or be a distraction. I believe that to end division and pursue unity in our world, we must be willing to listen well, enter into dialogue, and understand that we can show love, honor, and dignity to one another while still disagreeing. I don't think that happened here, but I have hope that it can happen. I want the creative community to be a place where individuals of all backgrounds, beliefs, and lifestyles can learn from one another, regardless of differences, not a place where we shut each other out. Wasn't this interesting? Well, I find it funny that um, in their little statement, the AIGA chapter mentioned discrimination, which is exactly <laughs> what, they, what did they did to poor Mr. Rourke. Yeah. And, and what this gentleman's uh, uh, occupation as a designer happened to working for a church has to do with anything is just beyond me. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is really interesting because... Um, you know, we, we just talked about the Supreme Court and how we have a litigious society, and if we don't like what we see or hear, you know, we either want to sue you or we want to take our toys and go home and, and not listen to you. So it's clear that uh, this uh, diverse, uh, inclusive organization uh, is, you know, and talks about being hypocritical. Uh, I think they're the, the hypocrites by uh, not welcoming um, Absolutely. You know, people from different backgrounds. And he wasn't even coming to talk about his faith no. or, or his church. <laughs> his work. He was talking about PowerPoint. <laughs> right, right. So, Design work. Um, I don't know how. And, and what you're designing ha has no basis being discriminated against at a, at a conference of your peers. Yeah. Um, I, I think that that is, is a... a a travesty that, that someone that prides themselves on the work that they're doing, no matter what the work that they're doing, yeah. is discriminated against. Yeah. So the, this this word discrimination keeps getting thrown around a lot these days, and it, it basically means that um, you're uh, discriminatory if you don't agree with everything I say. I think a lot of people um, mistake the word offensive or, or overly sensitive for discrimination. I think there's a lot of, of yeah. <laughs> miscommunication with, with that word there. Even um, 
There was another item in the news this week with Nike. They were getting ready mm -hmm. to put out uh, a new type of shoe that on the back was going to have uh, our first, one of our first American flags known as the Betsy Ross flag, which is the 13 stars mm -hmm. in a circle. Um, and one of their paid endorsers, Colin Kaepernick, uh, somehow determined that Betsy Ross and that flag was discriminatory or, or uh, racist. Uh, and they curtailed to him, to him, and they're not putting the shoe out. Uh, I'd like to go back to, to a comment I made in our first story of, of common sense. Can, yeah. can we just have some, some common sense when it comes to things and not be so overly sensitive one way or the other? So let's talk about um, David Rourke's response. What, what, what do you think about how he reacted he to the situation. He couldn't have reacted better to it, to say that, you know, to, to be inclusive and to have love and, and to, you know, invite everyone and, and then to kind of sneak it in. That didn't happen here, <laughs> right. but I hope it can in the future. I thought it was a terrific response. Well done, Mr. Rourke. Yeah. And it's it still uh, boggles my mind that all of this uh, interaction happens on social media. You know, the immediacy of the way we uh, respond mm -hmm. and react and communicate uh, with each other and at each other uh, is um, it's a brave new world the, the, the way we I don't know if brave's uh, a good word for it I uh, think people hide behind it could, and they're less brave because yeah, of that but yeah that's a good point alright I'm going to go to our third yes. story Northview Church a mega church with seven locations in Indiana has a regular practice called the Dollar Club Four times each year, they ask the roughly 10,000 people who attend worship at their various campuses to contribute $1, which the church uses to meet needs in the community, such as supporting foster families or paying medical bills. This past May, however, the church asked its members to consider donating 3 or $4 and successfully raised $30,000. They then partnered with a nonprofit group called RIP Medical Debt, which buys unpaid medical debts from providers for pennies on the dollar. Unlike collection agencies, however, they then pass the discounts onto the patients to help them get out of debt. Northview donated the entire $30,000 to charity, which was then able to leverage the money into paying off $4 million in medical debt for people in need. What an outstanding story. I love this. Shows yeah. the, the power of grassroots effort that, that can happen from a simple collection in, in Sunday service. Yeah, I'm so glad you recommended this story. It's uh, just very heartwarming and um Number one, it shows the, the power that just a, a couple dollars per person yes. can do. Yep. You know, that power in numbers uh, when you're, you're putting that uh, together for, for a, a common cause and a good cause. Um, Think about how $3 that you donated at church turned into $4 million yeah. in a raised medical debt. Yeah. That's outstanding. I love that. Yeah. And the uh, organization itself that they donated to, uh, to, to help with medical debt um, – I want to look into that. I, mean, I that's agree. A great, that's fantastic. I'd never heard of that before. To, so. to go from thirty thousand to four million. I mean, that's a tremendous opportunity, yeah. and and something that that is an albatross around people and and really prevents them from, you know, moving forward and and yeah. living a, a a faithful life in a lot of ways because it, it holds them back. And so to be able to to ease that burden is is yeah. just a, a, yeah. a tremendous blessing. Well, it's also a great example of what we can do here at our congregation. We do a lot of great things already. Uh, with our different ministries, uh, and you know, sometimes over the years we'll put together a capital campaign for right. something specific. Uh, we're we're uh, finishing up uh, a capital campaign now, so. Uh, you, you Our know. congregation is so generous in so many ways, and and you know, so many congregations are. I mean, another great example of that is our our El Hute uh, campaign yeah. of, of trying to yeah. to raise the last couple of dollars to get you know what we needed done on on that missionary trip. And so, you know, what a blessing that we've been able to to do what we we've wanted to do in yeah. that village. And even from a spontaneity standpoint, I remember there was someone here uh, uh, worshiping with us I one day, uh, a homeless couple, mm -hmm. and um, we decided to. You know, just donate our loose change to the to, in, our, in the offering to, to them that day, and and that what was a a, it was like a you know, it was over it was like fifteen hundred dollars. Yes. You know, yeah. So that uh, the. And they were grateful, and, yeah, and you know, yeah. I continue to see them at worship here yep, with us. So yep. they become part of the family well, know, they because are. Of, of how we yeah. help them. Absolutely. So, Anything else on this story? No, I don't think so. What a great couple of stories this week. Yeah, so thank you for uh, joining us today and uh, for, for uh, this month's episode of In the World. Be sure to check out the other 
shows and episodes that you'll find on our YouTube channel. A lot, a lot of good content and things going on uh, online and here in our congregation. So until next month, enjoy the rest of your July. Bye.